Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Really glad to have back the director, the, the founder of the Warrior Defense Project. It's Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Atticott. Jeff, how are you? I'm doing great, Joe. Thank you. Really good co- to connect with you today. Um, we have to obviously talk about what's going on globally. Afghanistan is under the microscope. China and Russia suddenly want to be great friends with the Taliban. We talked about this some time ago. Now, we've spoken in between, but when President Trump was still in office, um, there, there were meetings with Taliban leaders. And I said to you, Colonel, love you like a brother. I don't want the Taliban to be involved. They, they were uh, helping to train and give safe harbor to Al-Qaeda. They were part of the Mujahideen. These are bad guys. Their human rights, you know, um, um, history is horrible. It's disgusting. It's distressing. Uh, and you said, Pags, because of the way that country's made up and the warlords that, that control certain territory and different factions, you have to include the Taliban, and you're the expert, so I accepted that. But this isn't the way it was supposed to go down, is it, Jeff? No, no, not at all. In fact, the uh, Biden administration is trying to do the bait and switch. They're saying that this is the Trump plan that they were simply carrying uh, through. And of course, you know, if you've been watching the news in the last you know, seven months, you know that everything that Trump did, the Biden administration, regardless of whether it was good or not good, they just got rid of it. Uh, Trump had a condition-based plan to leave Afghanistan. Every president has wanted to get out of Afghanistan, but of course they want to get out with a peaceful solution, not the way we're getting out right now. Uh, the Trump administration opened up talks with the Taliban. Obama tried to do it, was unsuccessful, um, and it was condition-based. In other words, if the Taliban met certain conditions, we would begin to move our forces out. Right. And we actually started to do that. In my opinion, of course, it's an open question whether or not we would have been out by 1 May. That was the plan. But if the Taliban met all the conditions, we would have been out in an orderly fashion. There'd be none of this you know, massive uh, uh, hysteria that's, uh, that's that's going on and all the, all the tragedy that's occurring right now. Uh, and basically, we're, we're repeating what happened in Vietnam. We wouldn't have this disaster. Uh, but the Biden administration, in contrast to that, simply said, no, we have no conditions. We're just leaving. And they announced to the enemy the day we're leaving. So what they did, of course, is their advisors and the Taliban aren't stupid. Their narrative is we want to show that we're driving the Americans out. We're not going to let them get out of here right. without it becoming a fiasco uh, on their part. And that's why they launched this massive military offensive. And the Biden administration fell right into their hands. We pulled out you know, our military and left our civilians there, which you never do. If you're going to evacuate, you evacuate the civilians out of Bagram and other places. Then you pull out the military. They're the last folks to go. And, of course, what followed was a, a tsunami. Yeah. And um, this is Sun Tzu. Somebody at the White House needs to read Sun Tzu again. It is uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Atticott. Is that, is that the art of war? Is that is that what Sun Tzu is? Yeah. Um, uh, his latest book is called National Security Law. Make sure you go and get Is that what it's called, Jeff, just to make sure I have it right? Global and, Global and National Security Law. Okay, make sure you get that book. He's the director of the, war, the Warrior Defense Project. Go check them out as well. They do incredible work uh, supporting uh, warriors, either enlisted now or former uh, um, uh, enlistees, when they face trouble afterwards that is undue and unjust, and he does a great job doing that. Um, we should have left Afghanistan a long time ago. This is my opinion as an American. We went in there to get al-Qaeda. We got them. We went in there to to minimize the Taliban. We did that. We should have gotten up and left and said, have a nice day. We did what we should have done. You and I talked about how the rules of engagement changed under Obama, and we became police officers, pseudo nation builders. We had targets on our backs. Then the, the rules of engagement where you couldn't even fight. You couldn't go and find the, 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 the enemy. You had to wait till they shot you first or something stupid. We were there way too long. You and I, I think, agree with the former president and I guess the current president that we, we needed to get out. But when Trump put conditions on something like with Syria and Syria didn't follow what the conditions were or did something outside of what was expected, he dropped bombs on them. Jeff, if we would have dropped a few bombs just a couple of days ago on the Taliban's heads, wouldn't they have stopped? I mean, shouldn't we have done something as a deterrent here? Yeah, the the key to national security law is really deterrence because you can't fight everybody everywhere. And so President Trump projected strength. I mean, he killed the leader of ISIS. He wiped ISIS off the face of the earth. He killed the number one terror leader in Iran. Uh, He attacked the Syrians when he had to, when they used poison gas. So everyone knew that Trump was going to use lawful violence if he had to. This president, unfortunately, has not projected that same uh, that same aura of strength. And our enemies know it. And that's why they were, you know, all set to go. And, you know, President Biden announced when he's going to leave. Uh, with no conditions, and they simply 
move forward and the result was predictable. It was predicted and predictable. But yeah, I agree with you. Everybody wanted to get out of Afghanistan, but not this way. And that's the real issue. It's such Uh, a good point that you made too, Colonel. Uh, The fact is Biden came into office, did 40 executive orders plus in the first couple of days. In fact, most of them were on day one. We're back in the JCOP, whatever it is, the stupid Iran deal. We're back in the climate thing with with Paris. We're, We're now stopping the Keystone XL pipeline. We're opening up the border, doing anything he wants. But the lie about having to follow what Trump put in place here is just so stupid and egregious that anybody left or right shouldn't buy it. But but even having said that, had he followed the Trump deal, there would have been major consequences had the Taliban even tried this. I mean, I said this the other day on the air. I'm not, I'm not a, a military guy, so tell me I'm stupid if you want. You've done that off the air plenty of times, Jeff. But, but uh, I said this directly day one. You tell the Taliban if one hair on one head of an American is harmed or a hair on, on the head of anybody who helped the Americans is harmed, we're going to blow you off the map. If you say that, the Taliban responds, don't they? People, you've told me this a million times. They respond to strength. There was no strength here. No, there was no projection of strength whatsoever. Uh, And so, you know, the the end was was predictable, as I indicated. Right now, of course, we're trying to secure that airport, which we which we have. Our soldiers on the ground cannot be defeated. But the issue is we now have an artificial deadline of 31 August. And uh, we're going to try to get as many individuals out of the country as we possibly can that are civilians, that are qualified, that have the proper visas. And that's the mission right now. Uh, But it didn't have to be this way. Uh, It's just not it's just every mistake that could be made by the Biden administration was made. I've got to think that his intelligent personnel told him, do not do this, do not do this. This is not the way you do it. And of course, Joe Biden, uh, you know, basically wanted to have a political coup, I guess, or a victory. Uh, on the 20th anniversary of 9/11, and, and you know, proclaimed that he had was the one that got us out of Afghanistan. And yes, we needed to leave, but not this way. We we are going to pay the price for the way that we were driven out of Afghanistan for many years to come. I think. Shouldn't we have said we're keeping our embassy, we're keeping people there, we're keeping the air base, and we're keeping people there? And if you you want to come in and you're you're the government and you want to run it however you want to run it, fine. But we're keeping our presence here. And again, if you don't like it, we'll blow you off the map. I mean, isn't that really what we should do? You said this a million times because there's confusion about what the military does. The military goes in, kills the enemy, then leaves. So that's what we should have done, certainly. But having a presence in a country where we've been now for 20 years only seems to make sense. We're literally taking everybody out now, anybody we can get out. And Jeff, what of the people who helped us, who were translators, who were um, go-betweens uh, between the, the military that we helped build in Afghanistan and, and through, you know, even our, our, our uh, you know, national security folks that were in there, the, the undercover guys, the, the black ops stuff that was going on. We had a lot of help in Afghanistan. And like in Iraq before it, we're just turning tail and leaving them to die. We're hearing that the Taliban is lining people up who helped us and executing them in front of their families. I mean, what about them? Why would anybody ever help us again if we're going to do it this way? Well, you know, the horse is out of the barn. We, we had the opportunity to do this in an orderly fashion. President Trump had the blueprint. President Biden threw the whole thing out the window and just unilaterally with no military. I've got to believe his military experts said, do not do this. It will be disaster. He did it anyway, or whoever advised him uh, told him to do it anyway. And so we'd have to do a counterattack. You know, what you're talking right now today would require a counterattack. We'd have to put in 20, 30, 40,000 soldiers and then push back, retake the Capitol and then push out from there, retake back from Air Force Base. I don't think we're going to, I don't think the Biden fresh. No, no, I, I don't think we should do it. And I don't know if you're saying that we should do it either. I think most people would be against that. I mean, you and I, I think are in alignment here, but I guess what I'm asking is, mm-hmm. and I'm Monday morning quarterbacking, Jeff, no yeah. doubt. But what I'm asking is, had we said we will blow you off the map if a hair on the head of an American is harmed, they would have listened, right? They listened to Trump. Uh, they did not listen to President Biden. President Biden made those type of gestures to them. He said, you must be, you know, join the community of nations. You must engage in human rights and, and all these things. And they just kind of winked at him as they're doing right now. Their, their propaganda machine is, is saying that, yes, we're going to be inclusive. We're going to include women in the government. And, you know, that's not going to happen. Um, they're going to do exactly what they want to do. They know they've got about two weeks more. Uh, they have set up a counter perimeter around our soldiers there and our Marines at the air base, and they're going to control who goes through that perimeter to the airfield to get out. We're just going to have to wait and see. I don't think we're going to expand that perimeter. 
Um, and it's, 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 a, it's a day of infamy for the United States of America. There's no question about it. I think whether you're a Democrat or Republican, we all agree this is not the way it should have been done. And it's not a hard math problem to figure out. It doesn't require Monday morning quarterback. Everybody could tell you that this is not the way you do it. It's Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Attica. Get his book, National Security Law. That's the latest one. And also go to fallenangel.film uh, and go check that out. He's uh, the director of the, of the Warrior Defense Project. Let me ask you about what happens now. China and Russia suddenly are winking and nodding and, and, and giving the OK sign to the Taliban, they want to be best friends there. They want to replace the void that we, the Biden administration is obviously leaving there. What are the implications globally to the Taliban now maybe making deals with the Russians or the Chinese or somebody else? The Chinese are, are, are way ahead of the Russians right now. It's true that the Russian embassy is hasn't been touched. Our embassy, of course, the Taliban flag is flying above our embassy right now. Wow. So the Chinese have already recognized um, the Taliban as the new government. Which means what? Well, that means the United Nations now is impotent because the Security Council has five permanent members. One of them is China. And the Security Council, all five members have to, permanent members have to agree if they're going to use anything in terms of use of force or anything that's meaningful. That's not going to happen now because China will not go along with what the Security Council wants to do. So the United Nations is totally out of the picture. The Chinese are going to do what they want to do and they are going to assist the Taliban. It's in their best interest because they are. You know, they see us as adversaries. I hope we see them as potential adversaries, but they make no bones about what their goal is, and that's world domination. And we've seen this, you know, we've seen this before, and uh, unfortunately, it's unfolding right now, and they're very emboldened. Uh, so are the Iranians, so are the Russians. This is a, this is a disaster, uh, both in terms of the PR issues and in terms of real-world security. It's uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Atticott. Get his latest book, National Security Law. Two last questions. Number one, what would you say to somebody who fought in, in, in Afghanistan, who, who did one, two, three, four, five, ter- uh, five tours in Afghanistan, now seeing the way this thing ended? Because these people are, this has got to, this is going to weigh on them, these veterans. These are amazing men and women who worked their asses off, many of them maimed and harmed for life now, watching the Taliban fly their flag on our embassy and jump up and down as if they defeated America. I've been in contact with many of my comrades in arms that have served in Afghanistan, some of them wounded, uh, and they are extremely disappointed at the way that we left. I think everybody agrees that, you know, we could we could leave the country, leave maybe some type of small presence there, but it was time to leave. But it's the manner in which this president executed that mission is so very disappointing to our soldiers. And of course, we are professionals. We uh, love this country and we do our duty. And that's uh, that's what these men and women understand that we do it for love of country. It's always for us, God and country, God and country. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Atticott, last question. Sounds like a loaded trick question. It's not. Did we win the war in Afghanistan? Did we achieve what we wanted to achieve? Uh, and by the way, I don't know anything from anything. And again, you tell me that all the time. I think we won the war many, many years ago. I don't know why we were still there. Did we win? We, we won twice. We won twice and we lost once. We won when under President Bush when we drove the Taliban out of power and closed out all the Taliban training camps. We did that in a couple of months. We should have left then. We won the second time in 2011 when President Obama killed their leader, their elusive leader, Osama bin Laden, after a 10-year manhunt. We should have left then. Uh, we stayed and stayed and stayed. And, of course, we can't spin this into a win. That's what the Taliban wanted. That's why they didn't wait for us to leave. That's why they drove into the capital. And their scenario is that we drove the Soviets out and now we have driven the Americans out and thousands will now flock to the banner of radical Islamic extremism because their narrative is God is on our side, much like ISIS. Wow. Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Attica, Jeff, this is going to continue to unfold and it's continue to be a story. Let's do this again very soon, can we? Yes, sir. I appreciate you. We're back after this. Stay right here.